Hey guys, welcome to Allotronics, I'm Gregory and in this video we are going to learn about spread spectrum systems. We have here block diagrams and we also have simulations. Let's go! Well guys, first let's take a look in what is a spread spectrum system and here I have an example of a BPSK modulator and here its counterpart the spread spectrum BPSK modulator. And the emphasis about this video is about the demodulation process of a spread spectrum system. In this example of BPSK, we have here an NCO generating the RF or IF signal, and we have a mixer that modulates the RF signal with the bit string directly. So for a BPSK system, we are swapping the phase of the RF signal if the bit string is 0 or is 1. And in this example here, we can see that we have a swap in the phase 108 degrees, always that we are transmitting a 0. So here we have 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. This is a default BPSK modulation. And guys, remember, if you want to have access for all the simulation files and for this presentation here, you can become a patron clicking in the description of the video. Becoming a patron, you are going to support the channel and have access to all my simulation files. To create a spread spectrum BPSK, what we need to do is that after the BPSK modulation, we modulate the signal again using a pseudo-random bit sequence. This PRBS sequence here has a bit rate, in this case we call ship height, much higher than the data rate. And this is what generates the effect of spreading the spectrum of the modulation. For the BPSK only system, we have here a very narrow spectrum with, of course, the sync response. Standard for a BPSK modulation without any pulse shaping. And as the PSBR sequence is much faster than the bit rate, the output signal here of the spread spectrum system is spread in this spectrum because the bandwidth of this signal here is much larger because we have much more phase swaps on the signal and all these fast swaps of phase generates a signal that has a broadband spectrum. The pseudo-random bit sequence we also call spreading code because actually we are coding the modulation with this code here as you're gonna see. Here you can see the modulation process. We have the RF signal generator here. The bit string swaps the phase of the RF or IF signal and the BPSK modulated signal is now modulated again using the code sequence. To generate the code sequence, we use a linear feedback shift register that generates a sequence of n bits. And this code sequence generator is clocked by another NCO that's running much faster than the bit rate. The output signal, of course, continues to be a binary phase shifted modulated signal, but now it is modulated by the data and also by the code sequence. And here you can see that we have much more transitions of phase in the output signal. As this output signal here has a higher bandwidth, we call it spread spectrum. Because in relation to a standard modulation, the spectrum of the data now is spread in a larger bandwidth. To demodulate this spread spectrum modulation here, we need to make all these steps in reverse. To grab the idea of the demodulation process, let's take a look on this theoretical receiver here. We have the spread spectrum signal here in the input, the signal that contains the data and also the code sequence. The first step to demodulate the spread spectrum signal is to de-spread the signal. We need to take the spreaded spectrum and we need to collapse it to the original spectrum to retrieve the data on the modulation. So the receiver needs to generate its own code sequence that is equal to the code sequence used in the modulation process in the transmitter, and it needs to generate its sequence exactly in phase with the received sequence to revert the phase exactly in the same moments that it was reversed in the transmitter, removing the code sequence, nulling the effect of the spreading. This is why we call this the D-spreader. The receiver needs to have a way to detect if it's generating the code sequence exactly in phase or not, correct its own generator so it can de-spread the signal. And the ideal output of this first mixer here is the RF signal modulated only with the data. And this happens only if the internal generated code sequence is exactly in phase and exactly aligned with the code sequence used to spread the signal in the transmitter. After we de-spread the signal, we have here the original BPSK signal and it can be applied to the 
blocks that follows. Here you have a costas loop to recover the beat string and also a beat recovery or beat synchronizer to synchronize with the beat rate and generate the clock of the data. So actually the spread spectrum receiver is only this part here that demodulates the code sequence, applying it to the original data, reversing the effect of spread spectrum. This theoretical receiver here has two main problems. First one is that it needs to run in a very high sample rate to accommodate the RF signal. And the second problem is that it's very difficult to recover the rate and the phase of the code sequence, having it impose on the RF signal. It would be much easier to recover and synchronize the code sequence if we don't have the carrier, if the signal is already in band base. A better topology is something like this. We have the spread spectrum signal entering a quadrature down converter. This is a common quadrature down converter that will down convert the spread spectrum signal to baseband using an oscillator at the carrier frequency. Now that we have the signal in baseband, it's much easier to recover the ship rate or the code sequence rate to despread the signal. And when the despreading is working correctly here, the I and Q now are collapsed to the original spectrum of the data and the IQ signal can follow to a costas loop and a bit rate recovery block. Before we take a look on the topology of the demodulation process to how we're gonna synchronize the code sequence, let's understand here clearly how the spread spectrum signal works. In the modulator, in the transmitter, we have the data bit string and we have the spreading code. The two signals are multiplied because we have two multipliers in series and the transmitted bit string that will actually change the phase of the carrier is this signal here. We see that actually the spreading code is being applied to the carrier, but the spreading code is being reversed with the data. You can see here that when the data is high, the spreading code is reversed in phase and when the data gets low here, the transmitted bit string go to the normal phase. If the receiver tries to decode this signal here using an out of phase code sequence, as it's gonna multiply this code sequence here generated inside the receiver with the received signal, this one here, and they don't match, the output will be a noise-like signal. Because to get a reversal of the spreading, to know the effect of spreading, we need to multiply again to an exactly aligned signal. If it is not exactly aligned, we get only noise. And this actually is the main property of the spread spectrum system and CDMA systems. We can have multiple transmitters transmitting at the same time with different code sequences and the receiver can demodulate only one of the signals using the correct code sequence. All the other signals that are being received will look like noise after the spreading and only the correct signal with the correct code sequence will have its spectrum collapsed and will be recovered. And here we see in this example, now the receiver is using a code sequence exactly aligned, exactly the same code sequence. And of course, as we are multiplying again, we are reverting the effect of spreading and the output is the data string recovered. Any other signal received that was modulated using a different code sequence will appear here added as a noise floor and the energy of the correct signal will be much larger. So guys, the receiver synchronizes its own code sequence generator first using an acquisition phase where we're gonna acquire the phase of the code searching for all possible phases in a progressive way and after we find the correct phase of the code sequence we follow tracking the difference and misaligning and correcting the NCOs that generates the code sequences. So first, let's understand the acquisition phase. The RF signal first is applied to the down converter. So we have the I and Q mixer here that gonna down convert the signal. The two down converted signals are applied to the D spreading mixers where we gonna multiply with the local generated code sequence. And this machine here is actually a correlator. We're gonna correlate the input signal with the local replica of the code sequence, searching for a high correlation point. A high correlation point indicates that the local code sequence is aligned with the transmitted code sequence because it's the only situation where the data gonna be recovered. Any misalignment of the local code sequence 
will generate a noise-like signal that has correlation zero and you can understand this because the mean of the signal here is zero. As here, if we integrate this for small segments here, we're gonna have maximum values or a maximum negative value or a maximum positive value here. Here we can understand how it works. What follows the, the spreading mixers are two integrators that gonna integrate the signal in the output of the mixers. We have an NCO that's generating the clock to advance the code sequence generator. And after we generate a full code sequence, or after we generate a part of the code sequence, we dump the result of the integrators and measure the power in the integrators. Here we are measuring the power of the signal. If the correlation energy here is lower than a threshold, we need to advance the phase of the NCO generating the ship rate. When we damp the result of the integrators, we zero the integrators to start a new cycle where we're gonna measure the signal for a period of time, a full sequence of the spreading code or a part of the sequence, and we're gonna measure again the energy, and if it's lower than a threshold, we're gonna advance a little to advance the code sequence, advance the phase, and we're gonna make it again. When the energy, when the correlation energy is higher than the threshold, it means that the code sequence that is being generated in the receiver is in phase with the code sequence received by the receiver. So when this test here is higher than the threshold, we can switch to the tracking mode because we have acquired the phase of the code sequence. Another point of view of this correlator here is looking to it as a low pass filter. The integrator is a low pass filter that is measuring the energy in the output of the spreading mixers. And why this works guys? Because if you have a low pass filter here in the I and the Q, the energy in the output of the low pass filter will be high only if the signal is despreaded. Because if the despreading didn't work, remember the energy here the signal at the output will have a noise-like characteristic. And if it has a noise-like characteristic, the energy will be spreaded. And the low pass filter here will have a very low output energy. The output energy of the low pass filter will only be high if the signal is correctly despreaded and it lies exactly inside the low pass filter. This is another point of view of this block diagram here a low pass filter where we measure the energy in its output and the energy only will be high if the signal here has its spectrum collapsed to the correct spectrum. Now that we acquired the phase of the code sequence, we can follow to the tracking, where we're gonna only correct for the small misalignments of the local code sequence with the received code sequence. And for tracking, we need another topology. So actually you have two topologies inside the receiver. This acquisition topology will be used only in the beginning of the operation. And after it finds the correct phase of the code sequence, it switches to the tracking topology. Tracking topology seems a bit more complicated, but is not actually. You can see that we again have two correlators. So this circuit here and this circuit here are exactly equal to this one here. We have one copy of this circuit here in this upper arm and another copy here in the bottom arm. And this is a very clever idea, guys. What we gonna do? We gonna generate two code sequences. It is the same code, but one is a bit advanced in time. We call it the early code sequence and the other is a bit late. We call it the late code sequence. So if we generate two code sequence, one a bit late in phase, the other a bit early in phase, and we measure the energy of both, we can have an idea if our receiver is running faster or is lower. Because if the correlation energy with the late starts to be higher than the early code sequence, it's gonna generate a positive error here, and we can feed back this error to align the generators, the NCO generators here. If the energy of the early correlator here starts to grow higher than the late correlator, the error here will be negative, and you can feed back the signal to the other direction to align the clock rate of the code sequence generators. So having two code sequence, one a little late, one a little early, we can detect if the receiver is deviating for both sides. If it's deviating to the late side, it means that we need to advance 
the rate of the system, the code sequence of the local generator. And if it is advanced to the early side, if the correlation energy in the early side is getting higher, it signals the receiver that it needs to slow down the code sequence to track it correctly. So now indeed we have a closed loop system. The acquisition system seems like a closed loop system, but it's actually not a closed loop system. It's a searching system because we integrate measure the power and if it's not correctly we advance the phase measure the power if it's not correctly advance the phase it's not exactly a closed loop system here we indeed have a closed loop system that is measuring the deviation of phase of the code sequence and is correcting it changing the rate of the two nco generators here so let's take a look here on the simulation guys here you can see clearly that the receiver starts out of phase the code sequence in the wrong position and the correlation here is very low the blue is the output of the late correlator and the orange is the output of the early correlator for the acquisition phase i'm using the late correlator any one of the correlators is not a problem but after each measurement here the receiver is advancing a little the phase of the code sequence so we clearly see here that it advances, 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 correlation is still very low, advances, advances, and here the correlation starts to grow. Correlation growing, correlation growing here, correlation growing here, and here the correlation is higher than the threshold, and we switch to tracking mode using the closed loop topology, and now we can see small corrections here to adjust the output of the correlators, the early and late correlators. And we can clearly see it here, guys. Here in the beginning, you can see that the I and Q signals are not in phase with the code sequence. We have the early and late code sequence here, and you can see that they don't match. The output of the D spreading mixers here is a noise-like function. You can see that we have a lot of reversals of polarity here because the code sequence here is only swapping the phase in wrong positions it needs to swap exactly synchronized with the received signal and here is not this is why we have correlation zero here if we integrate this signal here the correlation will be very low but as the correlation starts to be higher here let's make a zoom here look at this guys as the local code sequence starts to be aligned, you can see the correlation growing here. Look what happens with the D spreaded signal, guys. Now the D spreaded signal has only one polarity, or positive or negative. It doesn't matter, but it has only one polarity. So now when it is integrated, it has higher energy, the correlation is higher. And indeed, this is the case, because if we zoom here, you see that now the local code sequence is exactly in phase with the received signal. Take a look at this, guys. And the spreaded signal has only positive or only negative. If we zoom here in a later time, you're gonna see that after we have closed loop control, you can see that the closed loop control aligned the early and late code sequence to be exactly aligned with the transition here of the code sequence of the received signal. When the received signal transitions, the early gate transition a little early, of course, and the late gate transition a little late, of course, but is exactly aligned with the transition. And you can see here the closed loop control making small corrections in this alignment and the spreaded signal has its major energy in a positive manner or in a negative manner here we have the i and q the spreaded i and q as the phase of the incoming rf signal is not exactly aligned with the phase of the receiver the carrier phase we have energy in both i and q but you can see that the correlation is perfect here and what are you gonna see if we plot the integration or the low pass filtering of the spreaded signal we're gonna see a signal that resembles the bit string it is not exactly the bit string because this is the raw i and q dumps of the integrators 
But now a common constant loop can decode these I and Q signals here to recover the bit string. So we need more blocks here in our receiver to be able to recover the correct bit string. I'm calling this a constant loop. It's not exactly a constant loop, but it resembles a constant loop. And this is actually, guys, only a quadrature rotator that is implementing a vector rotation. This is only a constant loop with I and Q inputs. As we already have I and Q inputs here in the outputs of the low pass filtering or the integrators, as we already have the signal in a baseband I and Q, we need to use four mixers to generate the rotation. The common Costas loop has only two mixers because it receives a real signal in its input. Here we are already receiving a complex signal that has I and Q components and we need to apply a vector rotation. So we use here four mixers to execute the common vector rotation. This is the matrix. We learned this on school. And using the rotated I and Q signals, we can calculate the error function as we learned it in the Costas loop video. You can click here up in the balloon. The error function generates an error that is applied to a PI controller that runs an NCO that corrects the rotation of the constellation so we can recover the data. The output of this PI controller could be connected directly to this oscillator here in the input of the receiver, guys. I draw this topology here because I think this topology is more common. In this manner here, we can have an open loop oscillator here, down converting the signal. And after inside the FPGA, we can have this topology here only to correct for small offsets of phase and frequency. But we could be using a DAC here to generate a correction voltage directly in the analog VCO here in the input. It could be done. And after we have the rotated I and Q, so for this simulation, the Costas loop would generate a rotation that would make the Q signal zero. Remember, the BPSK signal has only energy in the I component, in the in-phase component. So after the rotation of the constellation, the Q here would be zero and the information would be only in the I component. Having the I and Q component corrected, we can apply it to a time recovery system that is taking here the I and Q. For the case of a BPSK, we only need the I component, but in a more general topology, we're gonna get the I and Q, apply it to a time recovery system, here using a Gardner time error detector and a PI controller and another NCO. This time recovery system will sample the signal exactly at the bit rate so we can recover if the bit is a zero or the bit is a one. And this, guys, is the full topology of a direct sequence spread spectrum receiver. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please subscribe to the channel. If you want to have access to these simulation files, you can become a patron of the channel, supporting the channel and having access to these files here. Link for the patron is in the description of the video. Thank you for watching and I see you in the next video of Alletronics.